out from unboxing fatigue um, here's another thing that I managed to snag because I found it come up I don't know if there's loads of these around yet but I thought this was important because to me it's the first time for boss that they've put a, a color screen on a modeler I think that's true let me know if it's not also, I think the first time that they put a touchscreen on the device. And I think this came out of nowhere uh, for people like me who aren't involved with BOSS particularly. Um, this was quite a, a surprise. In the past, I've been fairly critical of the GT1000 core. Um, specifically because the, the interface of it is not particularly I think up to par with some others, so maybe like the Helix or the Fractal, or the Headbrush even, I felt like those had um, more inviting in interfaces and slightly more logical interfaces. Now I understand that Roland and Boss sort of have their shared menu systems that they use across their range, whether it's like a drum machine or a guitar pedal, they've got their own sort of way of doing things. But I think this is a bit of a departure, so I wanted to give it a chance, take a look at it. Um, so this is my first time checking out the Boss GX100. And I think it's fair to say no one really builds hardware quite like Boss. Um, that is something that you can rely on them for, I think. Just build quality looking stuff, generally simple. Um, and I hopefully built to last. So let's dig into it. Okay, let's turn it on for the first time and get to know the Boss GX100. So, color screen. I may bring this 
to an even closer thing. So first notes through it. Uh, I'll just press record now. My memory of the GT1000 stuff is not that I didn't necessarily dig some of the sounds, it's more that I didn't find the interface particularly inviting and something that I could really figure that I wanted to use going forwards. <laughs> So we see now we've got things in colour for the first time. How do I, I can edit these factors here, but maybe I press page across to get to other stuff. So you can see a few different views happening here. We've got these kind of things which are just showing you the actual name. Here, I think, is the view that I'm most interested in. So that's. This page here. Okay, so let's just get in here and edit, I guess. Um, so, how do I edit these? Do I just press effects or what? Right, if I press effects, then I can edit these things. So I can then change the type. Juggernaut. If I add another amp, how do I sort of unbypass that? Back. set this to be dual okay then I've got both cool right that's fairly intuitive I'd say so let's just Try some other presets. So this is Studio Blues. So you can get a real idea of what this screen is like. I like having this in and out uh, kind of view here. And if I press effects, I can come in here and edit stuff. Can I just add another block? Palette. Maybe. Insert. Just kind of drag that. Okay, that's fine, knob view. Let's 
seems like we've got an aggressive gate on here so if I jump to the where would that be if we have got a noise suppressor here uh, let's edit that knob view tap it to turn it on overall I'm I think I'm finding this to be quite a cool experience certainly compared to my first impressions of the GT1000 this to me is a lot simpler. Do I have to press effects for you to get here? Effects, maybe you'll just press this, turn it on. I feel like the sounds were there anyway with the, the GT1000 stuff. I just felt like the editor, you know, the PC editor was just a lot easier to use than the actual device itself. This, to me, seems to be much closer an experience to using the actual kind of PC editor. Um, I think I am finding this to be way better. Let me know in the comments if you've tried a GX100 yet. Um, let me know if you want me to do some more kind of specific videos on this. I just wanted to do like a very first impressions thing and overall I think that's pretty cool. I'm going to put together a, a preset or two. just need to charge my camera. But yeah, that's, that's pretty cool. I think this view here is where I'd be spending most of my time, I feel. Um, what is there a tuner here? Yeah, kind of interesting. Good work, boss. Right, so if I want to start from scratch, it's not totally clear how I just clear the decks. So maybe if we just go in here, press effects. And can I just get rid of everything? Okay. Cool. So I think we're now back to square kind of one. And we can see we've got our kind of assets at the top here, we our blocks that we can choose from. So let's see. First of all, can we stick a reverb in? So it looks like we can have multiple reverbs. That's different. Just reorder in this way. Right, then I'm going to add in an amp. Knob view. So we've got our types. I'm going to go for something matchless y if I can find it. Here we are. Um, do we add cabs? 
or the cabs just included. Um, maybe add in a boost. To move it to be the other side. Okay, then the knob view type will have a clean boost. Cool. Then we've got our amp. I don't think we need to worry about cab. Does that seem right? How do we get across? Page. Ah, here we are. Speaker type. Original. IRs. So we'll just go with the original. Sag and resonance, mic distance short, mic type. I'm going to change this to a condenser. And uh, mic position, four centimeters from the grill. Okay, so now we've got a boost and amp. <laughs> Add another amp, I think. Wait, or do I need like a split type thing? Unclear how you added like a split. Divide. Put these amps up here. And you change the type of divide to be dual. So now I've gotten both on. The dividers can have different modes. Mix stereo, A B balance, 100, 100. Maybe if I turn up that spread, how do we turn up the spread? What does this do? Let's change this amp to be something Vox E or something like a deluxe reverb, maybe or something. I don't know. Deluxe combo that will do, and we'll gain it up a bit. Presence up as well. You've got this gain switch, which I really like. Actually, let's mix it so that we've got pan left and right A. Yeah, now we've got them on the left and right. Let's add a delay as well. Are we getting to the point where we're starting to run out of juice or not? Where are you, delay? Oh, we've got some here. Let's just add a space echo in if we can. Insert space echo before the reverbs. Very nice. And then Reverbs, let's see what options we've got. Spring, ambience, room, plate and hall. Uh, maybe reverb instead. I mean, interesting, so we can have tons of reverbs if we want.
overwrite. I'm going to use a shimmer. Interesting. So now we've still even got one more reverb that I can use here as well. Reverb Plus. What is this going to give us options for then? Oh, we got other pages as well. Interesting. So that's Room. Ambient Spring. Are they all the same then? The reverb. So just reverb would be overwrite. Knob view has a few less parameters, right? Like the damping levels and stuff. Reverb Plus has all of those bits. So we'll just use the options. So Reverb Plus, we would have Hall, Plate Room, and this Ambience one. So let's try that. Okay, can we add in yet another delay or anything? Let's try delay shimmer. If I, I don't think I can insert it. So it's sort of unclear what the limitations are. I guess it just won't let you add them in unless you're overwriting. Anyway. Pretty cool, I think. Um, then I could write that to here. Oh, that works. Execute write. Control mode, what does this do? manual memory so I'm gonna to need to read the manual to get more out of this I think but it's uh, pretty cool uh, nice to see boss stepping things up a bit I think um, let me know your thoughts in the comments is this something that you could use uh, I'll be spending more time with it building some terms I'm gonna to put together an intro now using the factory settings I think thank you for stopping by feel free to like and subscribe and I'll catch you in another video soon cheers